Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome this morning. From your homes, from your car, from your motels, hotels, all over the all over the, the city, all over this county, all over the great state of Texas, and uh, all over the nation. People have been tuning in. Uh, and people from other countries. We've had, uh, we're so grateful for people from Jordan, people from Pakistan, and people from Bangladesh. And we're just so grateful that we can do this together as a family of God. One church, one Lord, one baptism, one faith, one Holy Spirit, one way and only way to worship the one true living God, and that is in the Spirit. Jesus said in John 4, he told a person, he said, the Father seeks such that would worship him in spirit and in truth. And so that's what we're doing. We're worshiping from our spirit. We're worshiping according to the truth we know, the truth revealed. Jesus is the truth revealed. He's the truth manifest. And so I'm uh, just excited today. I don't know if we can work the camera because it's just not that kind of camera. This is a phone recording this. But I have Miss Sarah with me today and uh, she's going to help us sing. I want us to stay with this song Waymaker because it's so simple and so profound and so powerful. And uh, it's, we've sang it uh, last Sunday, I think. But right now there's a lot of people all over the world singing it. They're singing it uh, in, in downtown uh, cities all over the world. People uh, standing and opening their windows and singing Waymaker. And there's more people calling out on the name of the Lord right now than there has been in a long, long, long time. And that is the heart of God. That is his ultimate prize. Uh, uh, his favorite song of all is the song of the redeemed. When, when a sinner saved by grace lifts his voice loud and strong. When those purchased by his blood, huh? <laughs> purchased by his blood, lift to him a song of love. There's nothing more he'd rather hear, nor so pleasing to his ear than his favorite song of all, which is the song of the redeemed. That's the whole purpose Jesus came, was that we might have life and have that life in abundance, the way God has life. And we were all at one time without hope, without God, without covenant. All Gentiles were without the covenants of God, lost without hope, undone, dead in our sins and separated from God. And at one point in one time, when you came to the revelation knowledge that you were a dead man, the walking dead, you were a dead man inside, the Spirit of God drew you into that revelation, that place of that revelatory knowledge, because no man, including you and me, can come to the Father except the Spirit of God draw him, the Spirit of grace, the Spirit of peace, the Spirit of mercy, draw. He drew you and you answered to Jesus. You said yes to the Lord. You called out on the name of the Lord. And at that moment, you received your salvation. You received the payment, Jesus Christ himself. You received his finished work, whether you knew all that or not. You received his finished work. And at that very moment, the Spirit of God that drew you into the presence of the head of the born-again nation, the head of the church, he himself became your seal, which the Jews understand that word seal to also very clearly be a picture of an engagement ring. And so the Holy Spirit drew you into Jesus. He's the ultimate top goal. He's what the entire Bible is pointing to. It starts in Genesis 3, pointing to this Savior, pointing to this Savior, pointing to a deliverer, pointing to a deliverer. Then the prophets start recognizing he is the Messiah. He's the anointed one. Then he's birthed and, and here's him manifest. And then Paul takes it over and he starts the explanation of the manifestation huh, of the preparation. And then Revelation gives us the consummation of the explanation of the manifestation of all the preparation. Isn't that wonderful? So the Holy Spirit 
sealed you. You've been sealed. You've been marked. It means to make a final transaction. Um, and so anyway, he became your way maker. You received him. And so today, I want us to just enter in together. We have something special for tithe and offering. I would ask that uh, you make that ready. We have ours ready. We uh, won't be able to do it right here online because obviously the phone's being used for it. But Jody and I will be presenting our tithe to the Lord. If you have seed, uh, you can do it. There's a link online. You can do the tithe. You can do offering. You can do seed. So many people have said that's the easiest thing I've ever seen, man. And so we, uh, we, just, we thank God for the faithfulness of the people of God. Uh, I thank God for every person that has remained so faithful to the storehouse that has continued to do service, continued to provide service, has continued. Uh, and so we just welcome every family, wherever you're watching from. And uh, we, we thank God for you. We, we're, we're excited about coming into your home today. We're excited about you tuning in today. I would ask if you would, if you, you think it's worth sharing, uh, share it. Uh, invite people to tune in with you. Invite somebody to uh, uh, witness to them. Invite somebody. And so we're just grateful today. We thank God for it. And so, Father, we thank you for this time together today. We thank you for the Spirit of God. We thank you for the anointing of God. We thank you for the peace right now, God, that floods our attention, floods our spirit, comes up in our spirit, our soul, gets into our body. We thank you for the peace of God. We thank you for the Passover lamb that has been sacrificed for us and our faith is in him. I thank you, Father, today for every person all over the world. Some of them are brand new, brand new, born again children of God as of as of this morning, as of yesterday, as of all the thousands upon thousands that have come to Jesus this past week. All the, the people that are crying out to God for mercy. And Father, we thank you that we know that God never does and he is not running out of mercy, but he's running out of time. We're at that, we're at that sliver of time between the end of the 6,000th year and the beginning of the 7,000th year, the seven day principle and father as you are running out of time we thank you so much for a consciousness of God in the earth and people are turning to the Lord they're crying out they're, they, they that call out on the name of the Lord shall be saved and that's the whole intent of you coming because it is not your desire that one person should perish be eternally damned be eternally condemned cast into the lake of fire, the second death that was prepared for Satan and his angels. It was never created for humanity. But that is the reward of the final condemnation. And it is not God's will, Father. We know this because you've told us in your word, it's not your will that any man, any person should perish but that all should come to the acknowledging of the truth, which is there's one God, there's one Father, there's one mediator between God and men. And that only mediation is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you today, Father, for the consciousness of it that has happened so broadly in the last, especially this last week. And Father, we thank you today for the supernatural help of God upon our president. We thank you for the supernatural help of God. All that's in the word help, grace. We thank you for the help of God and the helper, the Holy Spirit, that helps every nurse, helps every EMT, paramedic, doctor, every nursing home person, every nursing home director, every person in the medical field, all the National Guard, all the military being deployed for help. We thank you for help on our governor. We thank you for help on governors. We thank you for help on judges. We thank you today and ask you, and ask you to grant help Lord God, to the mayor of New York, to the mayor of New Jersey, to the mayor of Connecticut. We thank you and we ask you today for a granting of grace upon President 
trump, Lord. We ask you to grant supernatural, the help of God upon Mike Tents and that task force. Help from God, Lord God, upon the Treasury Department. Help from God. We know that God, our helper, is never out of help. We thank you and we call out on the help of God the help of God. We shout grace to the United States of America. Grace to the United States. Grace to the White House. Grace to the Pentagon. Grace, Lord God, to the governor's mansion in his office. We ask for the grace of God. We know that you're never out of grace, but you're running out of time. So we call out today with the rest of the world that is calling out for grace today. So many thousands of people calling out for grace. And Father, today again we add our faith to it. We ask for grace, grace, the grace of God be upon the United States of America. The grace of God. Father, we thank you today for the good that has come out of this. All the strife and all the three and a half year war, political war that came to a stop. And your word tells us that you stop, you cause wars to cease. This has brought everybody, Democrat, Republican, Independent, sinner and saint. It brings everybody back to a place of consciousness of a great need for God. We all have to eat. We all have to drink water. And we all have to breathe air. We thank you, Father, that there's a sense of unity coming together. That the last time it was like this was 911. And so, Father, we thank you that right now we declare the rhema of God. That my brethren, I would have you know that the things that have happened have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Philippians 1.12, that rhema word, Lord. My brethren, I would have you know, by faith, United States of America, I would have you know that the things that have happened to us have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. People are calling out on Jesus. Medical teams all over are calling out on their knees. There's videos of it. Calling out on grace. There's pictures. There's videos of police companies coming together policemen from all over the world in the U.S. on their knees in circles and in company formation calling out on the grace of God hallelujah there's videos of truckers in circles on their knees with their hands raised calling out for the grace of God hallelujah this is turned out for the furtherance of the gospel as we were scattered abroad The Word increased. The Word grew and the Word multiplied. That's the way this thing works. The church has not been silenced. She's been sown. We thank you today, Father, for the grace of God and for the furtherance of the good news. It is not God's will that no person should perish. That's the heart of our Father. Glory to God, glory to God, be glorified, be glorified, Jesus, Jesus, he's our way maker, glory to God. He's our way maker. He's our miracle worker. Hallelujah. You are here. Sing it, everybody. Moving in the midst. I worship you. Yes. I worship you.
watching every heart. Beautiful. I worship you, Lord Jesus. I worship you. He's here. You are here. Healing every heart. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. Thank you, 
Lord Jesus. Come on, let's just worship him wherever you are. Worship him. Give him praise for what all he's doing, what all he's being allowed to do by the faith of people calling out on his name. Glory, 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 glory. Father, we worship you. We thank you today. We thank you today for the word of God, the spirit of God, the blood of God, the payment of God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your words. The anchor to our soul. It's the answer to it all is Jesus, the word of God made flesh. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory today. We give you the praise and we give you the glory this day. We give you the praise and we give you the glory today. Be glorified today, this Sunday. Be glorified in the United States of America. Be glorified in the earth. Be glorified. Your glory fills the earth like the waters cover the sea. Your glory fills the earth. The presence of God is here and it's there. It's there. It's there to every person crying out unto grace to help in this time of need. And we thank you and we claim again that the things that have happened have actually turned out and will continue to turn out for the furtherance of the gospel in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I think it'd just be a perfect time to go right into communion while we're here. You would make your articles ready for communion. I'm going to read Psalm 121. Psalm 121. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 121. The bread representing the body of the Lord Jesus and the cup representing his blood, the total payment. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anybody with us this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Psalm 121, I want to read it to you. If you have your Bible, turn there with me if you would. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. There's more people in America doing that today than there has been in a long, long, long time. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about just the church. I'm talking about the lost. And we lift our eyes up to the hills from whence our help comes from. Grace to help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps, protects, preserves, shamar, hedges you in with thorns. He does not slumber. Behold, he who preserves, shamar, hedges in Israel, hedges in the covenant ones. He doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun is shall not strike you by day nor the moon 
by night. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen to that again. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Father, we hold this bread today. Your body. The picture of it, the representation of it. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for all that it represents, Lord, and it's the life for the world. It's the life for the world. You said that the Son came to give his life for the world. Father, we take this in faith for our own lives and for what it represents for the entire world. for the entire world, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We receive this today in Jesus' name. take this cup the Lord shall preserve you from all evil he will preserve your soul the Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore Father we thank you today for the truth of your word we receive it in Jesus name Have you received anything yet, church? Turn with me this morning. Let's just look at the word for a few minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. John 17. I have something in my heart today to add into the pot that the Lord has been building this thing, revealing himself to us given us real clear direction throughout this as a church family as the as a as a as a body as believers John 17 please John 17 John 17 please thank you lord thank you lord oh the heart of jesus Verse 1, Jesus spoke these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Oh, now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. 
I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. Now watch this. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world. He gave his life for the world. God so loved the world, but he's not praying for the world. Why? That's our job. That's the church's job. And for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Verse 10, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep, preserve, guard through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you have given me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition. Verse 13. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they're not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you would keep them, guard them, preserve them from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. Now watch this. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Still talking about his original apostles, disciples. There was many, 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 not just 12. Okay. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Now, verse 20, he's going to pray for us. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. Why? Why is unity so needed, global church, so that the world may believe that you sent me? Now listen, we're tapping in. Jesus is revealing his heart in this prayer. He's revealing his heart. He prays. He makes his own declaration to the Father and he starts praying over his, his disciples that he had made, his apostles and his disciples that he had made. Then in verse 20, he says, and now I don't just pray for these alone, but I'm praying for all those who will believe through their word. Yes. Yes. That they all, all may be one. That they all may be one. That they all may be one. You know, in a time like this, I'm going to tell you, it makes, it makes real puny the titles Baptist, Episcopal, Presbyterian, charis, charismatic is a, a Greek word or coming from charisma, but it just it takes away all the little, the little titles that, that, that man has said, well, we're this and we're this, well, we're this, well, we're this, well, we believe this, well, we don't believe that, so we can't fellowship with you. We can't fellowship with you. Well, we don't fellowship with you because, well, we don't fellowship with you because, listen to me, bottom line, we all got to have oxygen. We all got to have Jesus. We all got to eat and we all got to drink water. And in a time like this, the little sign out in front of the, the, the building, which is not the church, it's just the place that that local assembly assembles. But it starts making these things very puny. And it comes down to, God, we need your grace. It brings you back to your first love in many, many cases. We ask for grace. We've got to have Jesus. We've got to have grace. 
And so I, I love this. He's, his heart revealed, he said, I'm praying that they all, this is the global church. Now thank God, we thank God for unity in every little, every local church, but he's speaking globally. He's praying for the church. Huh? He's not praying for the First Baptist, Second Baptist, Faith Baptist, Southern Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Evan, whatever. He's non-denominational. He's praying for the global believing yes. church. Yes, I'm talking about the church that only Jesus can put you in. Come on. Huh? No man can put any other person into the church. Yes. A person can bring the gospel but the Spirit of God is the only one that can bring you into and baptize you into Christ, the church. We all drink from one, one rock, and that rock is Christ that gives the water. We all eat from one bread. Jesus said, he that eats of me, he will have eternal life. That's the person that is not condemned already in Adam. He comes out of condemnation. And I love one of the words. There's three translated for redemption or redeemed. One of them, and they all tie into this but one of them is very clear it means to buy out of the slave market never to be for sale again <laughs> hallelujah so Jesus bought us out of the slave market yes. never to have us on sale again he owns us hallelujah that they all may be one as you father are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Verse 22, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one as we are one. The only thing that makes us one is not a building, it is the glory which is the Spirit. We are only one by and in the Spirit. We are one right now. Yes. There's a unity right now because it's by and only by the Spirit of God. He gave us the glory, which is the Spirit of God. I gave them the Spirit of God so that they can be one just as we are one. The, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So we're one in the Spirit. We're one by the glory. The glory is what brings us into and makes us one. The glory of God. The Spirit of God. Can you say amen somebody? Now watch this. Verse 24 please. Or verse 23. I in them, you in me, that they may be perfect, complete in one, and that the world may know. Here's the world again. Jesus in his stressed hour is praying for the world. And don't forget, we were all there. <laughs> that the world may know that you have sent me. And we got to read this slow. Listen that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Now, many times we read that as a church and we say, thank God he loves us as much as he loves Jesus. And that is a fact. Yes, sir. But the context here, he said, I'm praying for unity. Verse three, Father, I in them and you in me that they may be complete in one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them. Who's them? The world. Have loved them. God loves the world. God loves the world. God loves the world. God loves the world. Let's go to a uh, right quick chapter three. I know we could all pretty much quote it, but there's something about putting it in front of your eyes. 314. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. There's the cross. So that whoever believes into him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved. God loves the world. God loves the world that the world may know that you have loved them even as you've loved me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes into him will not perish but have, have everlasting life. When you believe into Jesus, you have believed into the total 
substitutionary payment for all sin. Past, present, future. The nature of the, th- the, the nature that made you ever want to sin. Okay? Now, let, let, let's look at something. Go back to John 17, verse 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you've given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Verse 25. O righteous Father, the world has not known you. May Listen. Thank God today for all the added thousands upon thousands of people that are calling out on the Lord. And may we as a global church become better and better at really representing the gospel, the gospel of Jesus, the, the, the message of his love, the message of his light, the message of the, the complete redemptive work that he provided, the, the, the truth of his heart that is beseeching uh, uh, the, the, the lost to come, beseeching the believer to, to, to share that the, the message that the believer is told to share with the lost is 2 Corinthians 5 19 to 21 God has put in us the word of reconciliation reconciliation is a, is a, is a relational term it's restored back to relation with God through Jesus Christ may we become even better and better and better at making him known to the world. Oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you. But I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. So Jesus' heart in all of this, that's our, I want us to come out of this and go somewhere with it. His heart in this, he prayed for his immediate disciples, many of them, and his apostles. And he prayed for all of us that believe because of of their lives and what they wrote down in their words. And his prayer was that the world may know, that the world may know, that the world may know, that the world may know. So I want us to look at something again. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 4, please. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, please. You getting anything today, believers out there everywhere? We thank you so much for tuning in. Hallelujah. This is just what we do, isn't it, believer? 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. For I know, I'm sorry, I'm, that's, I turned 1 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. Watch this. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The saints, all of humanity was once there. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, notice the little g there, this is Satan. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. New King James says, verse 4, whose minds the God of this age... That's a great translation because his age is ending. (laughs) An age comes to a close. By faith, we know God made the worlds. The word is ages. It's picture frames, if you will. This is that age. This is that age. This is that age. And the age of the enemy's place in this system is coming to a halt, a forever end. And so he says, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ should shine on them. 
That is part of our prayer and our declaration today. And it is happening right now, church. There are videos out there if you look for them. Certain, most news channels aren't going to show them to you. Because a lot of them are run by the God of this world. Truth. True statement. But there is many videos out there of people calling out on Jesus by the masses calling out on the Lord for the first time. Again, there's, there, there's, there's, there's videos of, of truckers. I'm not saying they're lost. I don't know individually if they're lost or saved, but I know a bunch of them are saved and a bunch of them are lost and getting in. Listen, they're calling out on the grace of God, just hooking up with believers. That's our job is to continue to shine the light. Man, the last thing you want is a lighthouse that goes bad when it gets dark. <laughs> Shines real pretty and blinks real bright when it's sunny and pretty in the calm, smooth seas. And then once it got pitch black and I needed you the most, you quit blinking. Huh? No, this is our time to shine. This is the time that the lighthouse shines. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. Huh? Are you here? When ships are tossed and turned, what are they looking for? They're looking for the light. Yes. Huh? Who's the light? We're the light. Yes. So this is our time that we continue to shine. We're wise. We obey government suggestions. We're not lawless. Thank God. I thank God today for for a praying governor over over this state. I'm I'm sure there's others, but I live in this one. I thank God for, for, for Governor Abbott, who's a praying man. Prays for Israel, supports Israel. Every one of their feasts, he put something on his personal Facebook about that feast. And I thank God for that. I thank God for a believing president. I want to ask this right quick as I'm prompted to. Any any of you that are dogging the president, I would say this. Do, do your individual count of prayers for the president equal or usurp as more than every gripe or argument you've produced for the president and to the president and about the president. This is the time, Lord, uh, saints, that, that every person's prayer life for the, for the president should far outweigh. If you want to know the truth, there shouldn't be any murmuring, complaining about the president. I could take you to a lot of scriptures that could get, get real heavy, where, where, where he put somebody in authority and, and then said, why is it that you were not afraid to touch my anointed? So just as believers, we lift up our president and I thank God for him. And I believe he's going to do the right thing. I trust him. I believe he's going to do the right thing. I thank God for the counsel around him. I thank God for the spirit of God that is around him, up on him. The spirit of God is upon him because he's the leader of this nation. The spirit of God is upon his, his right hand man, brother Mike Pence. The spirit of God's upon him. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Remind me about that, please. Write that down big right there where we won't forget that. So we thank God today. Now, so the God of this world is, has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. Well, thank God those blinders are being lifted because of the light of the gospel, the light of the Christian, the light of the gospel, the light of the church of God. The light that is shining. Man, listen to me. When we had to all seclude into our homes, the gospel got spread. Man, there's more word on Facebook now than there ever has been in the history of Facebook. Everybody's using it. And I thank God for it. I want to make, listen to me. And none of us as a body of Christ, wherever you're watching from, we are in not in competition. Rid that out of your heart. We're not in competition. I, 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 I don't compete with other speakers. I don't compete. I, I, honestly, they tell me how many people watched and I th- give God the praise, but I don't get on there to see how many tuned in, how many tuned in, how many tuned in. Did they tune in? Did they watch me? I don't care. I'm doing this because this is what we do. Huh? I, th- thank God for, but thank God that the gospel is being scattered now. When they were persecuted, it scattered and the word multiplied and the word increased. Thank God for the gospel. Thank God for the the, the ability to use Facebook to sow the seed of the word, to shine the light as a lighthouse. Can you say amen? Now look, look at this. Let's go here. 
let's look at uh let's look at Acts chapter 2 verse 17 please Acts 2 17 Acts 2 17 thank the Lord thank God thank God thank God And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. All flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Now watch. And I will show wonders in heaven. I'll show signs in the earth beneath blood and fire, vapor of smoke. Now you get closer and closer to the end of, time, end of this age throughout this portion. Verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. That's a very specific moment in history, in time, I mean. Verse 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Brethren, listen to me. The purpose of verse 17, 18, 19, 20 is to reach a goal of verse 21 that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Hmm? That's the purpose of the pouring out of the Spirit. That's the purpose of all this. I don't want to get real deep into this, but the purpose is that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord would be saved. Now, go to 1 Timothy. Turn to the right. 1 Timothy 2, please. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, please. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 5. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all, all men. For kings, we would say presidents there, and for all who are in authority. Why? Why should we do that, Holy Spirit? That we, the church, may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Watch this verse 3. For this is good, it's acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, whose will it is to have all humanity to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Notice verse 4 again. Whose desire it is, His will is that all humanity be saved and come to the knowledge, the working knowledge of the truth. Look at verse 5. For there is, there is as in italics, it's not there. This is the truth that he desires and wills for all of humanity to come to. The knowledge of this truth, one God, yes. one mediator, Jesus Christ. That's the truth that he wills for all of humanity, all of humanity to come to. One God. is The truth is well, there's one God and there's one mediator between God, the one and only living, true, only God, and there's one mediator between that only God and all of humanity. No matter what religion you claim, the truth is there's one and only one living, life-giving God and there's one mediator, a high priest, one mediator that stands between that one true living God and all humanity, no matter what you claim to believe or not believe, there's one mediator, one go-between between you and the one true living God who is the believer's father, but listen to me, to the unbeliever, he's a consuming fire. Come on, church. 
I thank God I have a fear of God, but I, 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 I've, I've found the Father side of Him. I don't live every day in sin consciousness like I did most of my born again days. But it takes a revelation. It takes a revelation. It takes a revelation, saints, of His grace. It takes a revelation. Everything takes a revelation. You know, it has to become revelation to you. But I thank God for the truth. But there's one God and one mediator that stands between all of humanity and that one God. Hallelujah. And I thank God. Thank God for his word. One God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Who's the mediator? The man Christ Jesus. Verse 6. He gave himself as a ransom, a ransom sum for all to be testified in due time. Mm. Are you getting anything? Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4.14, 4, please. Hebrews 4.14. 4, Hebrews 4.14. 4, talking about this mediator, talking about this go-between between the one true living God and all of humanity, the Lord Jesus Christ, reminding ourselves. And anybody that's watching that maybe you've never called out on the Lord, you can call out now. He didn't say there's a certain time you got to wait till till you can call. He just said as many as shall call upon the name, you shall be saved. No matter what men try to tell you, the Bible says if you call out on the name of the Lord from conviction and something here that prompts you to do it, I don't care if it's out of fear. Hey, man, that's okay. There's reason to have fear. If I, if I, if I have not called upon the name of the Lord, then I am without... There, here's where I am. Listen. This is where I'm at without that. This is where I'm at. This is where all of humanity is at without that. Therefore, remember that you, believer, you were once just a Gentile in the flesh. You were called the uncircumcision by the circumcision. You were called dogs by the covenant people, the Jews. That at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise. You had no hope. You were without God in the world system. Lost, undone, without God. That's separated. That's eternally damned. Huh? Yeah. So if you've never called upon the name of the Lord, all you've got to do is say, I call upon Jesus right now. I believe, I believe something in my heart. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe that he, he, is, not, he, he is not in that tomb. He is raised from the dead. Yeah. So I'm to me in my heart. I can't explain it. Faith. I, I, I just call out on Jesus. I ask you to do that. I invite you to do it. And welcome to the family of God. And the Bible says, listen to me. It says if we are, listen, we can, we can say we're saved. What are we saved from? If we're saved, then we've got to be saved from something. His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What am I saved from? The wrath to come. Well, is this the wrath that we're sent? No, 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 no. no. This is not the wrath of God. This is not the wrath of the Lamb. We're saved from the wrath of the Lamb. We're saved from the wrath of God, the wrath to come. So when you call out on the Lord, you're saved. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath to come. We're not going to get into all that today. I'm encouraging you, though. We are saved from something. You're delivered from something. All right? Uh, and then first, whoo, first Thessalonians, I believe. I'll read one more to you so you'll have it in your quiver. And to wait for his son Jesus from heaven 
whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Yes. We're delivered. We're delivered. The Bible says he that eats of the body of Jesus, that's, that's, that's type and shadow, symbolism talk. We did it by faith when we took communion. Yes. He that partakes of the life of Jesus, he that receives him shall never come in to condemnation because he's been delivered from it. Yes. So I invite you today to call on the name of the Lord Jesus. I can tell you this. From the word, and I can tell you from just from my own personal experience, when I, I was I was I spent a lot, quite some time in church growing up. But when I got really born again, when I called on the Lord out of out of a knowing in myself, I need a Savior. I was in a public laundry room in early Texas. I was the only one in there doing laundry, and out of nowhere, the Spirit of Glory filled that room from stem to stern. Listen to me, no man even had to tell me, now say this, say this, say this, say this, say this, and you should be saved. I just knew to call on the Lord. There's something in your spirit that your spirit knows that, you're, that, that the one true living God is the father of all spirits. <laughs> the spirit of God has been poured out on all flesh. And I thank God, do you know that no man, I, I, no man can even call on the Lord until the spirit of God draws him to that point. You can't say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. So I thank God for every person out there. I believe that the Spirit of God is wooing you and drawing you, loving you, and showing the compassion and mercy of God. And I encourage you, yield into it. Just yield into it. He'll even lead you in what to say. And the Spirit of God will lead you. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. John 16. Listen to this right quick. John 16, 7, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it's, it's to your advantage that I go away. This is before he went to the cross. Because if I don't go away, the helper, the helper won't come to you. But if I depart, I'll send him to you. And when he has come, listen, this is the words of Jesus. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin, singular and of righteousness and of judgment. There's a wonderful teaching in that. What is the sin that the Spirit of God convicts the sinner of? The sin of, you need Jesus. Huh? You need Jesus. He's the only payment. If you reject the payment, there's no other pardon for that because you're rejecting the very pardon. That's the only sin that cannot be forgiven because you're rejecting the very forgiveness offered to you. That's the sin. That's the sin that leads. That's the sin. There is a sin, 1 John says in chapter 5, there is a sin that leads unto death. And I don't say you should pray for that. Why? There's nothing to pray about. The answer has come. Conviction has come. And then... It, 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 it's a purposefully acknowledgement choice to be unpersuadable to it. That's the sin that leads unto death. And there's no more offering for it. Why? Because you reject the very offering, the very substitutionary offering himself that has come to you. you if you reject that, there's no other sacrifice because you reject the sacrifice. Now, thank God for every believer that has received the sacrifice, the payment Jesus. But notice that the, the Spirit of God will convict the sinner, the world, of sin. Isn't that wonderful? That's his job. And I thank God that during this hour we're in, he is doing that. And in this, this midst of this unseen enemy, if you will, the Spirit of God is at work. He, he's working. The Holy Spirit's, I mean, 24-7, he's working. And the church is working. The church is shining. Whether it's wherever you go to, during your job or, well, they've, they've laid me off. Hey, man, you know what? Until another door opens, you have ample of time 
to get built up in the word and pray and pray and pray. Yes, sir. Believe God to lead you to another job. He said he would. He said he'd open the door for you. Believe God. Believe God, but use it. It's so important that people use this time effectively. Yes, I tell you, as Heartland Church, because I only speak for that church, when we come back together, I'm telling you, we're going to be like the church on steroids. We're going to be, gonna, I mean, we're gonna be a church on steroids, spiritual steroids. I'm telling you. We went, we, we went into this season full and strong, and I mean on a high. This thing hit out of nowhere, sudden fear. <laughs> got buildings built and uh, it's prospering. Uh, uh, go to your homes. Like, what? <laughs> this ain't the way God works. So what do we do in it? We stay built up. Yeah. We stay in training. We stay in training. We stay in training. Come on. Come on. Peekaboo. We stay in training. We stay in training. We don't put our Bible down and say, oh man, we can't gather. Dead. Gum it. Then the Bible gets dusty. No, it better not be dusty. It better, it better, it better be more wore out when we come together. Your Bible needs to be more wore out than it was two weeks ago. Isn't it something that it's only been two Sundays that we couldn't gather? That's how much gathering means to me, and I know it's been a long time since we've gathered, and it's only been two Sundays. I thank God it feels that way. Seems like it's just been months. That's listen. One of the ways you know you're born again is you love the brethren. And I'll tell you, we're in love with the brethren. God's in love with the brethren and God's in love with the world. May we not forget today that. Now, to start wrapping this up, we're going to end this with our offering. I have something very special for you for offering. Hebrews chapter 4, please. Let's talk about right quick this one mediator between all of humanity and the one and only true living God. Hebrews 4 verse 14. Have you gotten anything today, church? Give us, just just blast some hearts if you have or thumbs up. Just let it go crazy. If you've gotten anything, I mean, just wear it out. Wear the heart like the, like the little pig on Toy Story. <laughs> just wear it out. Hallelujah. To the glory of God. His word is working. We're shining. We're shining. We're shining. We're shining. We're shining. <laughs> Hebrews 14, listen to me. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Now, now the context here was not just saying what God says. These people had come to know Christ, received Him as Messiah, received Him as Savior, Deliverer, and then they were being strongly persecuted, same way Saul did when he became Paul, believed into Jesus. The next chapter, they're trying to kill him. Well, that was the context of this, this, this time. They're coming against Him and they're persecuting Him, and so these people are so afraid, they're drawing back out of this this redemption through Christ and not, not Judaism and not the works of the law. So Paul is encouraging them. This whole book is don't turn away from Christ. If you do, there's no more offering for sin. There is no more offering for sin. And so he's still in that same frame telling them, seeing that we have a great high priest, Jesus, let us hold fast to the confession you made when you received him. Now watch, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. I read this last night over the, over the nation. I want us to, to, to read it in that heart of where the nation's at right now with the coronavirus thing. But do not forget the thousands that have called out on the Lord. We have a high priest that can be moved with the feelings of our weaknesses because he was tempted in every area just like we are, just like many people are being tempted right now in this season. But he did it without sin, nature or deed. Verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Throne of what? Grace. Say it. Grace. The throne of grace. Grace. That we may obtain, I love this, mercy. Amen. And find, that word find, according to Jewish customs, means meet with and kiss. <laughs> that we may meet with and kiss grace to help oh, in time of need. 
Father, we call on your grace again today like we did at the beginning of this session. We call on the grace of God today. We ask you, Father, for a granting of strong grace. Grace for the president. Grace for Mike Pence. Grace for the whole team of the White House. Grace for Congress. Grace for the Senate. Grace for judges. Grace for the military. Grace for New York, Lord God. Grace for every state in this nation, O oh God. We thank you and we ask you, it's your will that none should perish. We thank you for a grace to hear the word of God today, a grace to hear from the spirit of grace that comes up on people and moves up in people's hearts. The grace of God. We say grace to America today. Thank you for grace, Father. Thank you for grace, Lord. Matthew Terrigan, one of our Ecclesians uh, that was here as a uh, a student uh, and uh, went uh, high school to early high school was a friend of many of them went to Howard Payne he's part of the Ecclesia group but he has moved back to his home uh, in the in the Philippines and uh, we're sure it's the Philippines he was in Indonesia was it? yeah I apologize yeah he uh, he's he lives in Indonesia is where he's from and uh, and he's watching tuned in online. Give him some love today, church. He's tuned in from Indonesia, his home, watching. And uh, thank God, thank God, Matthew. We bless you today. We love you, yeah. It's a blessing to be connected with you. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Think about this, church. Look at this net. It's been made just today, just from Brownwood to the Indonesia. Yes. More Muslims in Indonesia than any other country in the world. Yes. And the gospel light is shining there right now. Think about that. Matthew, I pray over you today in the name of Jesus, young man. I pray that God would continue to give you a boldness that can only come by a blanket of grace on you. I pray that God would give you supernatural boldness to speak his word unashamedly and like he said in his word, without fear, without fear. We hold you up as a member of Heartland Church today and, a, and more than that, a member of the body of Christ. And I pray the grace of God be upon you. I pray God strengthen you in your inner man that you be strong in him and unafraid. What can man do to you? I thank you, Lord, for Matthew. Thank you for his heart and his spirit tuning in. And that He's made a connect the dots all the way from Brownwood, Texas, 76801 to Indonesia. And that there is a connecting of dots wrapping all the way over there. And that there's a gospel light being shined in Indonesia this day. Like a massive ocean in one lighthouse out there. And if you look really close, you see that light flickering. And we've connected some dots today as a family of God today. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for him and for his faith. Hallelujah, somebody. So we call out on mercy. I'm going to end this with this portion. This is our end result, and I believe it was a rhema word, our last gathering together Friday night, and then we're going to receive our offering. I want you please, right quick, Psalm 125, verse 1 to 3. And you can grab Isaiah 14. Psalm 125, 1 to 3, and Isaiah 14. I believe this is the heart of God. I believe it is the end result of what we're going to see Amen. from this coronavirus and just this attack. <clears throat> Woo, boy, the light's been shining brighter and stronger than ever, man. Thousands of people calling out upon the name of the Lord. Psalm 123, 1 to 3. I believe... I just speak for me. I believe the spirit of revelation put this in my heart. This is the end result of this thing. Will there be more epidemics? Absolutely. The Bible tells us as we get closer to the end, you're going to see these things. You're going to see epidemics, pandemics, but you're also going to see a lot of gospel demic, and you're going to see <laughs> healing demic, and you're going to see deliverance demic. You're going to see all them other, yeah. God, all them heavenly emics too, and demics. Yeah. So, Psalm 125. 
Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. Right here, verse 3. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. The scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God allotted Israel to them people. We the people, our forefathers, allotted this land to to God. This is the land allotted to the righteous. It was found, found on the Mayflower. (laughs) It was found by righteous people that soon as they got off the boat, they broke bread and gave thanksgiving to God. And that's why we still carry on thanksgiving tradition. (laughs) Yeah. That they could preach the gospel. Man could worship the one true living God. (laughs) So the land allotted to the righteous, it will not continue to see the scepter of wickedness trying to rest on it. Now our last scripture, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, please. This is really, really rich right here. This is a, this is a speaking of Satan when he is being overthrown, but the the prophetic picture in it really fits right now. Verse 3, it shall come to pass, remember that phrase, the scepter of wickedness, the scepter, everybody say scepter. scepter, the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, scepter, 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 scepter. 14.3, Isaiah, it shall come to pass in the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your from the hard bondage in which you were made to serve. A lot, listen, a lot of people being made to serve, being made to go along with certain things because of this scepter of wickedness that is hit. But it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord gives you rest from sorrow, fear, and hard bondage in which you were made to serve. Listen, that you will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Listen, right quick. Babylon ties into a word Babel. Babel goes back to the Tower of Babel. God called it the Tower of Babel. Babel is a Hebrew word that means confusion. God confused their languages there. It was called the Tower of Confusion. They couldn't understand each other. Babylon coming out of Babel, king, stay with me, king, many places in Old Testament prophecy, there is a king, but it's a man, a literal man over the nation, but it's a ruling demon prince over the, over the, 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 of the, of the air, the the supernatural side. Okay, so many times when God is addressing the king or the prince, you have to discern spiritually, is he talking to the man in leadership or is he talking to the ruling prince over that that nation? Here, king, he's speaking to a ruling prince, not a principality, but we wrestle against rulers of darkness. So listen, Babylon meaning confusion, King meaning a ruling prince. Stay with me now. The scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. When God gives you deliverance from fear, sorrow, and the bondage, you take up this proverb against this ruling prince of confusion. This ruling prince of confusion. And you say, this is what he said, you say how the oppressor has ceased. Verse 5, the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. He who struck the nations in wrath with a continual stroke. The numbers climbing, the numbers climbing. We're not talking about God. He's talking about this ruling prince of confusion. He who ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and no one hinders. The whole earth is at rest and quiet 
and the whole earth breaks forth into singing. I claim that this day and I ask you as a body of Christ, we claim that. Father, we take up this proverb today in this earth. We take it up against the king, the prince, the ruling prince of Babylon, this ruling this ruling thing of confusion. We take it up and we say how the oppressor has ceased. The golden city, the place of confusion ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the ruler. He who struck the nations in wrath with this continual stroke, he who has ruled the nations in anger is now persecuted and no one hinders. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. And we say in the name of Jesus today that the scepter of wickedness shall not continue to try to rest on the land that has been allotted to the righteous. In the name of Jesus, we declare this today. And this we know, my brethren, that that which has happened shall has actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we make this our proclamation today, our declaration that God is being glorified. And you just watch certain news and you look for more live videos today. You'll see thousands more coming to know the Lord today, calling out on the name of the Lord. It's there. You just have to look for it. But it's there. It's happening right now. And the Holy Spirit is the only one. He convicts the sinner of sin. He's at work right now. And there's nurses and doctors and cops. There's even videos. There, there, we saw video of, of inmates yes. in prison yards all on their knees. I'm talking about crip, blood, all of them. Come on. The, the, the mafia, the brotherhood, the nation, the circle, all, they were just out there at, at that point. These things break racial barriers that need it so much. Yes, they break break gang barriers and they were all out on those prison yards and they were all on their knees with their hands lifted like this calling out said they were praying they wrote in there they were praying for the grace of God to help during this time come on it's going on it's happening it's going on and the scepter will not continue to rest on the land allotted to the righteous this too shall cease this too shall pass keep your light shining and glory to God today. I pray you've gotten something out of this today. It's been a wonderful time to tune in with you. Now, I want you to make your offering and your tithe, the tithe of God ready, please. I have something special here. I want you to hear. Watch this. Brother Bob got dressed up early this morning, bow tie and all, and went outside and he, he did this to receive the tithe and offering. And it is a blessing, and I, I thank him for it. So I'm going to play tell you this. I'm going to get it where in the microphone she'll zoom in. Let's see here. Good morning, Harland. Hang on, what's this? Let me. Good morning, Harland. Oh, hang on. Here we go. Good morning, Harland. It's good to gather together, even virtually. It's good to gather together, and I pray this morning that you have prepared the tithe. You have prepared yourself, your heart, for a time to present to God the tithe that belongs to Him and any seed that you may sow. And this is a time of encouragement. How many of you know that God will provide? He has provided, He is providing, and He will provide. Just a couple of notes here. You know, when the Israelites were in the desert, God provided. God told Jacob in Isaiah 41, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus told the disciples as he delivered the Great Commission in Matthew, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, listen people, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He's with us. In Genesis, during a dream, God told Jacob, Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God's not done with us, folks. 
Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can stand against us? Whom shall we fear? Harlan, this is a press. This is not the end of the world. This is not the end of times. It's a press. We, we are ready for a time such as this. We've been taught. We've prepared. And remember this. This is good. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they, that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Jesus. Good aren't we? Yeah. You go on further down, by the way, that's Matthew 6, beginning with verse 25. Yeah. You have little faith. Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? Yeah. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But your heavenly Father, Heartland Church, your heavenly Father yeah. knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Folks, he's with us. I would encourage you to participate. There's a, there's a link to give online if, if that's how you need to do it. If you're not comfortable giving online, there's a, a, a mailbox at the church, big black metal mailbox that locks your your sewing is good in that box and besides that if you've been cooped up in the house it might not hurt to get out and just take a short drive to the church and present to him the tithe mm. if you're not comfortable with either of those then i would encourage you to make sure that the tithe put it in an envelope and when you feel comfortable when when that time comes if you want to mail it mail it but be sure to set it aside how many of you know that the church is still paying electric bills and and is still helping folks that uh, are in maybe more of a press than some of the others right now so be encouraged he's with us he will provide a way and sometimes that way is us folks Sometimes that way is us. Father, I thank you right now yes. for your grace yes. and your mercy. Yes. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you've prepared our way for this day. Jesus, Jesus, yes. as I stand here planted on the soil yes. of the greatest nation on the planet Earth, I thank you for the body that we are appointed to, the Heartland Church. We lift up our members today, Lord Father. I thank you that you meet their every need. Their needs are met, Lord Father. We trust you, Lord. We have faith. We have your faith in us. And we stand strong, Lord Father. We, we are hooked arm in arm. Our shields are hooked together in this time, Lord. And we thank you for strength that comes from you. Lord, we present to you the tithe today. That part that is set apart and holy. Lord Father, we thank you for the doors that it opens for us. Yes. And the doors that are that are evil that are meant to to trap us, to come against us are closed as a result of the tithe. There is power in your tithe, Lord Father. It's yours. We honor you with it. We thank you that you are the seed provider and we are sowers lord we are sowers yes. we thank you father for seed that we choose cheerfully choose to give today yes, we thank glory to god hallelujah amen and amen glory to god isn't that wonderful yes. isn't it good to hear his voice yes Love you, Brother Bob. Oh, Thank Father, you, we worship you today for this time together. Yes. For every every person tuned in, we give you the glory today, Lord. 
Thank you, Father, for the tithe, every offering. We thank you for your eye upon it, your hand upon it. I thank you for every person today that is tuned in to watch, Lord God, and their family. We thank you for the promise of your communion. We thank you for the Holy Spirit today. We give you glory for your word. May we shine bright today. However that would look in whatever setting you lead us into, we thank you today. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Amen. amen. Church, <laughs> ah, yes, ah, we love you so much. We love you. We're so thankful for you. Ah, this too shall pass. The scepter of wickedness shall not continue to rest on the land allotted to the righteous. We take that proverb up today. It is well with our soul. It is well. Yes, Hallelujah. Eat you something good for lunch. Be thankful for whatever you have for lunch today. And be strong in the Lord today and the power of His might. We'll be keeping you updated. We're very excited about all that God has been able to do through media. And I I give Him the glory for it. And I thank Him for you today. I love you. We love you. Have a super, super rest of your Sunday. Love you. Bye-bye.